I'm Dirty Dan, and you're watching Shaq Scales. <laughs> Just kidding. Not really, though. I am Dirty Dan, and you are watching Shaq Scales. So I've been in here messing around all morning, fed a couple snakes, filmed that. I'll put that at the end of the video. But I'm about to clean Bubbles, the Asian forest scorpion's cage. Never really put her on here. I don't mess with her much, you know? Clean the cage every couple months. Real simple care. This is how I have her cage set up. Got some fake plants, you know, cork bark. She's always under here every time without fail. You know, the mulch, whatever, some fake plants. So these guys are actually really simple and really easy to take care of. Keep them about, you know, I've read 75 or 70 to 75 degrees. I've also read 75 to 90 degrees. Her cage stays about, I think it's upper 70s, yeah, 78. Um, and she does awesome. She eats, she molts it. This is, uh, it's fragile, I'm not gonna break it. See, they molt just like, uh, I don't know, like a blue crab does, like spiders do. I think a lot of bugs molt, actually. Don't quote me on that. I don't know nothing about bugs. Had a scorpion when I was younger. Actually, I don't remember what kind it was. But I remember you had to be 18 to buy it. It was up there on the more potent venom. And my sister, actually, at the reptile show, she went to the table and bought it because she was 18. I wasn't. My dad was scared of spiders and scorpions. Weren't allowed to have them in the house. So I kept that thing under my bed for a couple months. And gave it to a friend. But these guys, Asian forest scorpions, their venom. It's like a bee venom. It's nothing serious. I mean, if she were to sting me, it'd swell up a little bit. If you were allergic to bees, you'd have kind of a problem. And I, I used to hold her sometimes. Muffin just peed. It's funny, man. She's been sitting still since she ate. It's been like, like four or five days. And she's finally moving around and she peed. So when I'm done cleaning this cage, I'll take her out give her a bath. Probably not going to film that, though. But yeah, I mean, these guys are simple. They don't do nothing. It's kind of funny. I never used to see her out and about. Never watched her catch food. Get that sticker out of there. Never watched her catch food until she molted and her whole behavior changed. I see her out more. I've watched her actually hunt down crickets. She'll take crickets off the tongs from me. And I talked to a buddy of mine. She keeps a lot of spiders. Tarantulas, she's got like, I think like 50. She said a lot of people say that, that after they molt, they see behavior changes. This time it was kind of for the best because for a while, it just looked like a cage with decorations in it. Never saw her out. But I'm going to clean this. Um, When I take her out of the cage... I used to work at this pet shop. We had emperor scorpions there. And I'd just grab them by the tail, right behind the stinger, lay them in my hand, you know? I got her. I did that the one time. She did like a back arch, grabbed my thumb with her claws. I panicked, I let go. Thought for sure she stung me, she didn't. I caught her, obviously. I didn't drop her on the ground. But, uh, hear that? Do you hear that? I wonder if it's on the camera. Bulbasaur just croaked. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. That's what I like to hear. Um, I use this. Just use the lid to kind of coax her into it. Put the lid on it. Put it aside. Clean the cage. Slowly tilt it so she walks back into her cage. I don't handle her. She doesn't like it. I don't want to get stung. I don't want to get stung, not because I think it's, it, I'm sure it doesn't tickle, but I don't think it really hurts. I don't want to get stung because I don't want to, I don't want to drop her. I don't, you know, I don't want her to get hurt after she stings me by accident off of like reflex. Because I've never been stung and I don't know how I'd act if I did. I'm pretty good at keeping my cool though, but I don't know. I just don't handle her. She doesn't. Scorpions aren't like a dog or a rabbit. Even snakes, they'll tolerate being handled. Snakes don't want to be handled. They want to be left alone. They want to sit on the heat, and they want to eat food. But all right, I'm going to clean this. 
Show you guys a little close up once I get her in here. And that'll be about it. Like I said about the temperature earlier, this cage stays about 78 because this room stays about 78 to 80. If you didn't have a room like this, you just put like an under the tank heater, always use a thermostat. Get these little cheap thermostats off um, Amazon, which, you know, it's cool. They're cheap. See them hanging back there. But they're not that, I don't know what the word is, like reliable. Because, you know, you set it for 96. It can drop down to like 92, like the, like the, um, Vivarium Electronics thermostats. You set it for 92, it won't go below 91, it doesn't go below 93. Usually it stays right at 92. Them cheap ones, they got a little more of a, like, wiggle room. But something like a Scorpion, where the temperature can be, you know, a couple degrees off, I think they'd work just fine. I just don't use one, because I really don't need it. For bedding, what I'm using, usually I do this Eco Earth and some Cypress mulch, and I mix it together out of Cypress mulch right now. So I'm going to use Reptibark and Eco Earth, mix them all together, throw a little bit of moss in there. Um, still got to rinse off all the cage decorations. I just take them right to the sink, give them a rub with water, no cleaner or nothing. Um, scorpions are pretty clean, and... I don't think they're prone to infection or nothing really like that. I don't know. I've had her on Mercy Gear. This is how I do it. She's fine. I don't use the chlorhexidine. I do when I wipe the cage out, but not on the cage decorations. I just give them a rinse with hot water, scrub anything I see on them off, and that's about it. So let me load this up. And in the beginning of that time lapse, I was messing with something. I seen little things jumping around, and I don't think it was a springtail. It looked like little crickets. Maybe some crickets have babies or something. I don't know how crickets reproduce. If you know, let me know. I can Google it later, I guess. But uh, it was weird. They're bouncing around, and I've gotten I've gotten springtails in um in like bags of moss before. Sometimes bags of cypress mulch, and it's not a bad thing if you have them in your cage because they'll help clean up the poop. Obviously, I couldn't use something like springtails or isopods in like Muffin's cage. She's way too big. Um, but smaller stuff like you know gecko species, frogs. Frogs will probably over time eat the um, isopods and stuff, but they'll help uh, help clean the cage up. They call it bioactive setup. Which I'd like to do one day. I mean, all I gotta do is do it, man. I say it. But watching some motivational stuff, you know, and it's saying, like, stop talking about it, just do it. If you put it off in five years, you could have been where you already are. It's gonna take you another five years. So on and so forth. Because some stuff I just kind of put off, man. I don't know why, but I do. But... I want to get a bioactive set up for some, somebody in here. Probably the crested geckos. I think that'd be cool. Live plants. You know, bugs clean up their mess. They have little waste when they poop. So it's, that would be cool. And it'd be good for them, you know. I don't know. Give me some time. But right, let me finish setting this cage back up. Then we'll do a little close up on Bubbles. The Asian forest scorpion. And I feel like there's something else. Oh, well I got to clean up. But I'm probably not going to film that. So just give me a minute be back with you in a minute you know what else is pretty cool these things they're just you know little grass squares got the grid on the bottom take these and just mush them right down into the dirt some it's kind of kind of turns out looking pretty good i picked these up i think at pet smart they're like two bucks each that's a steal of a deal i'll tell you what listen i'm gonna tell you what you gonna tell me i'm gonna tell you what so that's it simple Set it back up, organize it a little bit. She's good to go. All right, so now let's take her 
out of the Tupperware, put it back in here. I gotta go get some crickets later. Hopefully, I can get on film eating. Relax, relax. This thing is crazy. She is in all her glory. Complete strike pose, ready to go. Come on, girl. You wanna go home? Check it out, clean home. There you go. Voila. All right, y'all, that's it. That'll do, pig. That'll do. But like I said, if you want a pet, you don't have to handle, clean them once every month, month and a half. You know, feed them a couple times a week. Scorpion's the way to go, man. They're really simple. You can make the cages look really cool. Um, One thing is, like, humidity, though, when they're about to molt, you want the humidity to be right. If they get stuck in their molt, they do die. When she molted this time, I didn't even know because, like, kind of the signs are you don't see them active. But I don't ever see her active anyway. So I got really lucky. I went in there, messed with the cage. I shined the black light, which I put at the end of this. When you shine a black light on a scorpion, they glow. keep it on them all the time supposedly it's not good for him um shined the light on there and her shed was glowing and she wasn't because she was still soft takes them a little while for their skin to harden up so if your scorpion does molt remove all food that's in there any crickets the crickets can bite them while they're soft it can mess them up um give them like i think it's like five days or seven days to harden up before you try to feed them again that's it man Super simple animal, super cool, super dope. But thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching. Remember, do something you love. It's good for your soul. Peace out, y'all.